lot of candy. No, I'm trying to cut down on my sugar. I want to eat healthy from now on. What are you doing? I'm looking at a recipe on my friend's blog, Healthy Eats for All. Can we interview her for Nishcom TV? We were thinking of making a show about healthy eats. Yeah, sure. I'll call her up. So what did you guys dress up for Halloween, Beta? I was a skeleton. Nice. I was a witch. Wow. A lot of trick-or-treating. Did you get lots of candy? Yeah. Which Skittles. one? Skittles. Oh, nice, nice. Action, guys. Welcome to the Healthy Eats for All show, Auntie. Thank you, Beta. What would you like to talk about today? Sugar. Sugar. Okay. Um, what do you think about these foods right here? Did you know that these foods, which we consider healthy foods, also have sugar added to them? So we have three major food groups in our diet, beta. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. What are carbohydrates exactly? Good question, beta. Good question. Let's tell your friends also about it. Carbohydrates are also called as carbs, and these are body's most important and readily available source of energy. Most foods contain carbohydrates, and which the body breaks down as the major source of energy. There are two basically major types of carbs, simple carbs and complex carbs. Complex carbs are the whole grain bread, crackers, pasta, rice, quinoa, fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, etc. These not only contain vitamins and minerals, but are also rich in fiber, which helps your digestive system work really well. Uh, fiber helps you feel full, so you are less likely to overeat. Now, a bowl of oatmeal fills you up better than a bowl of candy with the same number of calories. Simple carbs are also called simple sugars. They are found in refined sugars, like the white sugar you see in a sugar bowl or a bowl of candy. But you'll also find simple sugars in more nutritious foods, such as fruit and milk. It's obviously healthier to get your simple sugars from foods like these. So why is fruit healthier if they both have sugar? Because sugar isn't added to the fruits and they also contain vitamins, fiber, and important nutrients. A candy has lots of added sugar but doesn't contain any nutrients. It's just empty calories. So auntie, what type of carb should we eat? Actually, both simple and complex carbs can be part of a really healthy diet. But what we are seeing these days is that sugar has become a very popular part of our daily diet. To keep us on track for a healthy life, the American Heart Association recommends that we don't consume more than a certain amount of sugar per day. For men, it's nine cubes, women, six cubes, children two to 18, also six cubes, and kids below two years of age, zero cubes of sugar. So now let's see an average day in your life, shall we? Uh, for example, breakfast. Let's figure out how much sugar is there just in breakfast. Now keep in mind that one teaspoon of sugar we'll take it as one cube okay now give me some examples of your breakfast um a bowl of cereal with mm -hmm. milk great sometimes i have a bagel with cream cheese and some oranges on the side great once in a while when i'm in a rush i just quickly go and grab a cup of milk yeah. and with a pop tart nice sounds interesting sounds very normal doesn't it now let's see how much sugar is there exactly in this breakfast shall we 
then maybe a snack before your lunch would be something like a pack of those mini muffins or a jello type snack pack now let's talk about your lunch maybe you are eating a sandwich with some chips and some fruit snack pouches here is how much sugar you consumed for just the lunch alone let us say that you come home and have a granola bar or a rice crispy type snack before you start studying and have a glass of maybe soda or a glass of lemonade finally you have some rat roti dal and sabzi for dinner that would be your best meal of the day from sugar perspective but then you have some ice cream beta took take a look at the sugar you just consumed for the day and look what the american heart association is recommending do you see the difference about 15 20 years ago when you bought stuff at the grocery store sugar wasn't added to everything but now it just seems to be in literally every packaged food the reason is super simple basically the sweeter a processed food is the more it sells and the more money the companies make in fact we don't realize it but there are just 10 major food brands in the world that control majority of the food and beverages sold in stores but auntie would you please explain why eating sweet fruits is a problem when you eat carbs your body breaks them down into simple sugars which are then absorbed into the bloodstream as the sugar level goes up in your body the pancreas releases a hormone called as insulin insulin is needed to move sugar from the blood into the cells where the sugar can then be used as an energy source and all the excess sugar that is there is then stored as fat and that is a problem when this process goes really fast as with simple sugars you're more likely to feel hungry again soon when it goes more slowly as with a whole grain food you will be satisfied longer so complex carbs give you energy over a longer period of time the carbs in some foods mostly those with a lot of simple sugars they make the blood sugar level rise more quickly than others and scientists have been studying whether eating foods that cause big jumps in blood sugar and as a result accumulation of fat contribute to health problems like heart disease diabetes and widespread inflammation within the body so is it okay for me to drink some sort of diet soda actually even though diet drinks are supposed to have no or low calories they are not good for you they end up stimulating our appetite which results in us overeating plus they do not reduce our desire for sweet things but in fact they increase it so does this mean that all sugar is bad then no absolutely not the most important thing to remember is that not all sugars are the same the key is to make sure that the majority of these carbs come from good sources and that added sugar should be limited so what can we do here auntie so first of all we have to try to avoid a very common sugar mistake that we all do with children and adults both it's when we use sugar as an incentive to reward good behavior it sends the message that desserts are somehow better or more valuable than other foods and that can start a pattern of unhealthy unhealthy eating from childhood itself try using a different reward system which is more fun and activity based plus there are a few simple steps that you can try to make changes in your life one learn to read your food labels there are a couple of things to look for in the food label make sure you understand the serving size as you might be looking at the nutrition values for a single serving but actually eating two or three servings then also read the ingredients carefully don't assume that something is healthy just because it says natural or light on the label sugar can also be hidden under a variety of names just because it doesn't say sugar in the ingredient list does not mean it's not loaded with sugar and some of these names they typically end with ose 
like sucrose, fructose, glucose, dextrose. And some others can be raw sugar, corn syrup, or dehydrated cane juice, etc. Point number two. Remember your numbers. Nutrition labels give sugars in grams. And that confuses a lot of people. But just remember, 4 grams equals 1 teaspoon. And that's your equation so that you can visualize those teaspoons in your head when you're shopping. Because if you can visualize that this bowl of cereal that you are thinking of eating to start your day has 4 teaspoons of sugar in it, you're going to think twice about it. Point 3. Make sure that all your meals are balanced with adequate protein, healthy fats and fiber rich foods. They help stabilize your blood sugar and keep you energized for longer. Whole foods like beans, quinoa and other grains, vegetables, fruits, they are loaded with nutrients and they will make you feel full and satisfied so you are less likely to crave excess sugar. Point number four, drink more water. It's simple. Sometimes we are just dehydrated but we confuse it for sugar cravings. So next time when you are hungry or craving something sweet, try having a glass of water first. Lastly, we just need to stop eating so much processed food. Food literally is medicine. It impacts everything about us. The most important thing that people need to do is start eating real wholesome food. Start cooking as many days of the week as you can. We used to do that normally, but now it's become the exception. It's the best thing you can do for disease prevention. Convenience of eating processed and fast food is actually expensive and is making us sicker. We need to have more control as to what we are putting into our bodies. Try cooking with your family on the weekends. Do some sort of meal prep over the weekend maybe. Or you can even buy pre-cut or even frozen veggies from the grocery store. If you make that shift to start eating real food, real changes will happen. And if we all make these small changes, we can have a healthier, happier future. Added sugar is not okay to have on a daily basis. To keep things simple for a healthier lifestyle, you can maybe keep the 80-20 principle in mind. 80% keep your food healthy and wholesome and rest can be 20%. Our future depends on a healthy society and you feeling your best. Benefits of a reduced sugar and processed food diet are that you will have more energy, clearer skin, less anxiety, more productivity, better sleep, more joy. It's simply life-changing. So how can I keep track of how much sugar I'm eating in a day? That's a great question. That can be made into a fun game actually. Start the day with an empty glass and every time you eat something, check out its label or Google to see how much sugar it has and then add a sugar cube or two to the glass. By the end of the day, that way, you will see exactly how much sugar you ate. Plus, whichever family member ends the day with the lowest number of cubes wins. It is very important to keep in mind balance and moderation. Cakes and cookies taste great when you keep them as a treat for special occasions. If we keep these foods as a special treat like our grandparents did and make them at home with less sugar and quality ingredients, there is no reason why you can't enjoy them. And now, we are going to the kitchen to make a healthy alternate for banana nut muffin or bread. In this recipe, we have made a few key changes. We have used olive oil instead of butter, oat flour instead of all-purpose flour, and we have used about one-third the amount of sugar than is normally there. But they are still amazingly sweet and moist to eat. Do check out their nutritional content and I hope you try making them at home. Auntie, this was very helpful. Good. Can you please come to our other shows also? Absolutely. My pleasure, Beta. I would love to come. So as we were talking earlier, we don't have to give up our desserts or the sweets. We just can make a few changes and make our desserts a lot healthier. Today we will be making banana muffins and for them I have made a few changes. Instead of the butter, we will be using olive oil which lowers the fat content. For the sugar, instead of using one cup of sugar, we will be using just one third cup of sugar. You can imagine how much the sugar content is reduced in these banana muffins. 
The third thing we have changed is, instead of using the regular all-purpose flour, we are using oat flour. That increases the protein and the fiber content of the muffins, which makes them a lot healthier than your regular store-bought muffins. And the fourth thing is not a chain. We are adding walnuts to it, which adds a lot of healthy fat to the muffins. And because we are putting in some good dark chocolate chips, mini chocolate chips to it, it will serve as a really good dessert for us. So let me start with showing you all the ingredients that we'll be using today. Like I said, we'll be using oat flour. And I know it can be a little bit uh, tricky to use oat flour for baking stuff because it tends to make the baked goods a little bit dense. But if you're worried about that, you can start off with uh, using one cup all-purpose flour and one cup uh, oat flour. And then you can move on to using two cups oat flour like we are going to be using today. So I'm going to measure in this bowl. We're going to be putting the dry ingredients separately and the wet ingredients separately. Let me measure out all the dry ingredients first. These are the oat, this is the oat flour. You can buy it from store uh, pre-made or uh, you can just take your regular processed uh, quick oats and put them in a food processor or a Nutribullet and make your own oat flour at home which is very cost effective, trust me. And there is the two cups of the oat flour. Now to the dry ingredients, we will add half a teaspoon of the baking powder. One teaspoon of the baking powder, or uh, baking soda, sorry. So we've added the baking soda and the baking powder to it. And the last dry ingredient left is one half a teaspoon of the salt. And while we had, before we just started doing that, I had just switched on the oven at about 325 degrees Fahrenheit. So by the time everything is assembled, our oven will be warm for the muffins to go in. Now we'll just mix all the dry ingredients really well and keep it separate. So now we are going to move on to the wet ingredients. And the first one are going to be the star of the recipe, the bananas. And we're just going to mash them up in the food processor over here. You don't have to break them into too many small pieces. The processor is going to do everything for you. So that's great. And we need three large bananas. Or if you happen to have medium or small bananas, then you need four. Basically, once they are mashed, uh, it should be about one and a half cups of the mashed bananas. That's what we are looking at. And there we go. Stop it in the middle and just scrape the side so that all the pieces are mashed properly. Done. One more time, I'm just going to take this tiny piece of the banana and I think we have it there. So, as you can see, it's now perfectly mashed. We have a banana puree. So, that's ready. Now, let's get the other ingredients. We're going to measure about one teaspoon of the vanilla essence. The only dry ingredient that we're gonna need is the sugar. And we need about one third cup of sugar.
oil we need is about half a cup of oil. Olive oil, like we told. And there you go. So we have the sugar, we have the olive oil, we have the vanilla, and then we need half a cup of the milk, which we'll measure at the end. And a couple more ingredients left. The first one left is the walnuts, which are the key source of healthy fats for us over here. And we just need about half a cup of these. And I'm just going to chop them up roughly. Because we don't want big, big pieces coming. So we just want evenly chopped pieces that can scatter throughout the muffins. And it tastes really good. Now, you can either make muffins or you can make banana bread if you want. Um, banana bread takes a little bit of extra time. It takes about an hour to make. And the good thing about the muffins is they are ready in about 35-40 minutes. So they are definitely, if you are in a rush and uh, you want to do it fast, I would suggest go with the muffins. So there you have it. The walnuts are chopped. We we'll keep them separate and we will also measure the two tablespoons of the dark chocolate chips. Keep them separate here. Now we'll start assembling everything in this KitchenAid mixer. The first thing to go will be the oil. Then we put in the sugar and the vanilla essence. Once these three go in, we just switch it on and we just mix it properly. After that, the other wet ingredient left is the banana. And I think we have it here. These three are mixed. We will just put the bananas in that. Trying to do best, scraping it out. Don't leave any of the young bananas inside because that's what's providing the sugar in it. And you have to make sure that when you choose bananas, try to make sure they're the ripe ones, not the green ones. So that the more ripe they are, the sweeter they are, and the less sugar you'll need. And the last thing that's left is the milk. We need half a cup of that. It. All the wet ingredients are in now. We we'll just mix it for a few seconds. And that's it. Now we can just, we already have the dry ingredients all mixed up. As a recap, once again I'll repeat, two cups of oat flour, uh, one teaspoon of the baking soda, half a teaspoon of the baking powder, half a teaspoon of the salt, Everything, it goes right in this bowl and we mix it one more time just give a little bit of a help with the spatula for the dry flour that's sticking to the side At the end, just add the walnuts and the chocolate chips in it. And not too much of mixing, and there you have it. And I'm just gonna show it to you how it looks. And there you go. It's all nice, it's not too wet. I mean, it is wet, but um, it's not too liquidy. It's kind of lumpy. And that's the way you want it to be. Now, the best way to do is you take your uh, muffin liners. This recipe makes for a dozen muffins, or it makes for one bread, which you can slice into 12. 
slices. And there is the scoop. And you just take a regular ice cream scoop and just scoop about two of these scoops into each. Now, once this is done, all the muffin pans are filled, then this will go into the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. And I would suggest halfway through, just rotate it, the tray in the oven, so that one side doesn't get too dark brown, golden brown, and it browns really nicely, evenly. And how will you know that it's done? You'll just uh, use a cake tester or a toothpick and just Stick it right in the middle and see if it comes out dry. If it comes out wet, then you can keep it for another five minutes. Otherwise, it's done and it's good to go. Let's see. These muffins can be really, really versatile. Uh, you can use them for breakfast. You can use them as a snack or uh, take them out for lunch with you. They work really great uh, for a picnic. They store really well. Uh, you can even freeze them, in fact. So, and they thaw out really, really nicely. So, if you are in the mood for a baking session, by all means, go ahead. Bake them in bulk and freeze them. Then, all you need to do is just take them out, thaw it out, and there you have a really good, healthy, guilt-free dessert for, or a breakfast for you. Now, just smack them out a little bit to get rid of the bubbles and rest. The oven will do its job. So today we made the banana muffins, the first in the series of our recipes. And these are the healthy version of the banana muffins that you get from the store. Um, we've used oat flour instead of the all-purpose flour, one-third cup of sugar instead of the one cup sugar, olive oil instead of butter. There are no eggs there. And we've used milk instead and walnuts for the healthy fats. Uh, they're nice dark chocolate chip and I seriously hope you guys will make it at home. Try this recipe for sure. I'm sure everybody in your house will love this recipe. So this was our very first recipe guys. I hope you like it as much as we do. We've tried it here. We all love it. I hope you'll go home and try it uh, also. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos and leave your feedback in the comments below. Uh, if you have any more feedback, you can also email us at health at nishkam.tv. Thank you so much. Keep watching Healthy Eats for All. See you next time. And subscribe to our YouTube channel.